So that means we can shove this down a sewer line or a water line or something like that and not worry about the camera being wrecked. Hey guys, Brad here. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at another endoscope or snake camera by Teslong. This is the NTS500B. So I'm really, really excited to take a look at it. I've been playing with it for a couple days now and it's, it's very, very impressive. So before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe, hit that notify bell, give me a thumbs up if you like, and uh, leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And we'll also leave some links if we can find them to this certain tool. All right, let's take a closer look at it. It's a, it's a hard case, not super hard. It's got some flex to it, but overall very impressive little case. It's got some metal latches on it. You open this sucker up and first glance, we've got some really nice foam, you know, high dense foam. So nothing's really going to break through this case and damage what we have in it. We've got a nice little monitor. This is about the size of uh, an iPhone uh, 8 or 9 or 10, whatever, plus, I guess. So decent little size. And then we've got the camera here. Now this is 16 feet of cable, all right? And it's kind of cool how they've connected it. It's using a screw on the back and we can undo this screw with a little Allen key and a screw that they give us. So this attachment here is, is pretty solid. It's not gonna come out. I really like that. Because if you're, you know, sometimes if you're shoving the cable down a pipe or something, this might just unhook and you might lose your connection and, and it's just, it's nice that it's really, really well connected. Let's go over what else they give us and then we'll take a look at what's in the camera here and some of the specs on that. So these nice little Velcro uh, belts, I guess, to keep the cable all together. And then we've got a little stand. I'll show you how to mount that. And then we've got the cable for charging. And this little vial right here is for the camera itself. We've got your sort of your standard little magnet and a little hook. So let's start off with the camera. Now again, Teslong, I really like them because they do the dual camera. They have one on the front and they have one on the side as well. And you can switch between those views just by pressing this little button right here where it goes into the, the monitor. So very, very easy. For LED lighting on the side camera, they've got one LED light and then six tiny, tiny LED lights around this camera. So if we wanna attach one of these fittings on here, you have to unscrew this little tiny ring that's on the front. Now you don't wanna lose this because it's helping protect it as well. So once you get that off, then you can thread on, this is the magnet. All right, so the magnet is right on the end and you know, you can't see through it. Sometimes I wish they'd put magnets on the sides, but I guess it really depends on, on what you're going into. If you had a magnet on the side, then if you're going in a metal pipe, you know, you'd constantly be sticking to it. But uh, if, if the magnet was on the side and you had the camera view you know, going forward, then you'd be able to see where you're going. This camera view is sort of obstructed because you've got a magnet in the way. So, you know, that's why it's nice to have the side camera. Okay, so now let's take this little guy off and put back the ring. I like that they give us a little vial to keep all the these little small parts in. All right, now let's take a look at the stand. The stand to me is kind of I don't know, it's nice, but I don't think I'd ever use it. It just threads on the back here. It's super tiny. This is not your standard size thread, so you can't mount this on a tripod without some sort of modification. But essentially, it allows you to put it up like this. Now that's all right if you're maybe going through some, some items, but you can see how easy it wants to tip over. So. It's kind of gimmicky. I mean, I, I don't think anyone would really use it. You know, when you're trying to pull this out, this thing's going to be tipping all over the place. So a lot of the times when I'm using one of these scopes, I've got one guy on the monitor and one guy 
you know, pushing the scope in because it's sometimes you need two hands to sort of thread it in there. Really depends on what you're doing. All right, so we went over the charging cable, went over the bits and pieces that come with it. Let's take a look at the unit itself. All right, we'll just slide that over. Now, to turn this on, you just press the on button. You just hold it down. And I have to hold it down a little bit longer. Okay, there we go. So, it's taking a view right now of my tools. Now, the unit itself has a flashlight on the back here. So, right here. And to turn that on, you just press this green button. And you can see the light just comes right on. Okay. So that's handy if you're like in a furnace room, mechanical room or something like that, and you're just trying to see into something, you know, you've got yourself a little light. So we turn that light off. Now it's pretty simple to use. We've got the menu function right here, menu, so that you can swap between your camera, your video camera, and the pictures and videos that you've taken. So right now we haven't taken any. And then this mode is our camera mode. And then this mode here is our video camera mode. Now to start filming or taking pictures, all you have to do is press this single button right here, this dot, and it'll start recording. And when you do that, in the bottom corner, you'll see a timer. That starts indicating that we are recording and how much time we recorded for. And then to stop it, we just press the button again. Now there's a little button beside it, which is a light. And so this light, I'm going to show you on the scope here. If you press it three times, you can cycle through the three different modes of brightness. So there's three levels of brightness on the tip of this camera. So pretty sweet. Now, if we want to switch views and go to the side view, we just press this button right here. Okay. Press that. Now we're on the side view camera, which has one LED light. And we can turn that on. So you can see right there. Okay. Just stay out of your shirt. So pretty, pretty easy. Okay. All right. So then we can go manual. And we can take a picture with it just by pressing this button once. And it makes a sound when it takes a photo, which is nice. So we can take a few photos. We can switch to a different lens. We can take a photo of the wall there. So pretty, pretty cool. Um, this does get a little bit warm, I noticed, just, just by using it. This tip here gets, gets kind of warm. I think that's probably normal. You know, there's a lot going on in that little tiny head there. So if you want to go into settings, Oh, before I go into settings, you can also flip the screen around. If you're upside down, it has two modes, you know, upside down and regular. So you can kind of flip between what you're filming if, you, if you're having issues. So see, we're uh, back and forth there. So we go into settings and you can just kind of go through different like date stamp and all that, language, date stamp format, all that type of stuff. There's not a lot to it as far as settings go. And uh, yeah, overall, it's just pretty, pretty cool. Now, some specs on this. The camera itself is an IP67 rated. So that means we can shove this down uh, a sewer line or a water line or something like that and not worry about the camera being wrecked. The this unit itself, the actual screen, is just sort of, you know, they call it rain resistant. So it's not something you want to submerge underwater, but it can handle getting a little bit wet. The camera right here is about a five millimeter head. So that gives you an idea of what you can get this into. And as far as the image caption, we're looking at 1920 by 1080. And the recording resolution on this thing is 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080 MOV. So pretty cool. This is a 16 foot cable on here, which is really nice. That's, that's crazy long. And uh, overall, I'm super happy with it. 
I will say this, because the cable is so thin, being five millimeters, it's actually a hair maybe less because the camera head is just a titch uh, larger than the, than the uh, cable itself. But, you know, it's very, very flexible. So I think if you were to put this down a large line, like a three inch or a four inch line, two inch is probably okay, but a three or four inch line, you might run into problems if you start hitting fittings, right? If you hit a fitting, because this line is so flexible, pretend my hand is a fitting and I hit it, you know, it could start to roll over on me. So this camera, I feel, is uh, really, really sort of designed and built for smaller tubes, uh, engine compartments, things like that, things that are tiny and and aren't going to sort of bend the camera as you're pushing it in. When you're, when you're going in a larger hole uh, or larger area, um, you want a camera that's going to be a lot stiffer. Look, like the other Teslong video that we just did a review on, that one, that camera is a lot stiffer, so it won't bend as easily if you're shoving it down a drain pipe to see if there's a crack or or a blockage or something like that. So keep that in mind, you know, every tool has its purpose and this is more for delicate work, you know, maybe getting in behind furnaces and seeing if there's anything wrong with, with some of the electronics or uh, I think mechanics, this would be a great tool in a mechanical shop, you know, getting into tight areas. It's just, it's just really, really nice. So let's, let's do that. Let's shove it in um, I don't know, let's put it in my blower here. And there's not going to be much to see, obviously, but, you know, we can get it in the back of the blower and kind of see what's in there, all right? So you want to come on in and check out the screen. So I've got the front view on, and those are the fan blades, okay? So how's that? Yeah, that's that's a little better? Okay. So, you know, not much to this other than just a little motor and a fan. And you got to kind of play with it to get where you need to go. Now, if I'm not sure where I am, I could press on the side here and get a side view. And I'm not really getting much, you know, a bunch of plastic. We all know what it looks like inside. And we'll just keep shoving it in there. All right, so just a big tube. We can see out the other side, kind of right down here. You can kind of see some red. That's my uh, Milwaukee pack. I'm trying to get through here. We're gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. See if we can get out the other end. Oh, there we go. We're out the other end. All right. So that's what the inside of a blower looks like, guys. Just a big plastic tube. And there's the fan again. I'm a little bit hung up. Okay, there we go. And yeah. So as you can see, if maybe I had a broken fan blade in here and I wanted to take a look at it, I could do that. I mean, I can pretty much put my eyes down here and see it anyhow but you get the idea it's it's super handy to get into small spaces and overall I'm really impressed with Teslong's products I mean this thing right now I think is around 130 to 150 dollars I think that's Canadian I'm not sure I'll, I'll leave links down below but um, for the value like it's it's unbelievable I've said this before I think I've paid over 200 maybe it was close to $300 for my my DeWalt snake camera and it's got a really short snake on it and yeah the the camera does come apart from the handle and stuff and it's cool um, but overall it's just not I think value wise this I think this is is better you also get an SD card in this it comes with 32 gigabyte SD card and 
I didn't show this, but the charging port is on the bottom right here, right next to the SD card. So it comes with everything that you need. And it also came fully charged. So right out of the box, it was ready to use. And just, just a really nice little unit. I'm really impressed with Teslong's products. All right, guys. So I think that wraps it up. Uh, leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Are you using these things? Do you have any questions for me? Please leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notify bell. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Till next time, keep on crushing it. We'll catch you later.